to Audiovisual Cultures with me, Paula Blair. In this episode, I have a fantastic conversation with voice artist and speech coach, Leanne Turner. Huge thanks to your wonderful members at patreon.com forward slash AV Cultures for all your support. And thanks to all listeners and everybody who's engaging on our socials. It really means a lot. Stay tuned to the end for ways of getting in touch and for supporting the podcast. I connected with this week's guest, Leanne, through matchmaker.fm, and this is a website that connects people who make podcasts with people who would like to be on podcasts. So big thanks to them for all of their work on that. Do enjoy this really insightful conversation with Leanne, and I'll be back with a few more bits and bobs at the end. Hello Leanne, thanks so much for joining me today. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks Paula. It's just really great to see you today oh, and uh, I'm really excited to speak to you. Excellent, yeah. I'm really loving your background on this in Thank Paul. You. It's <laughs> sparkly and gorgeous and colourful. Thank you. <laughs> Mine's very boring. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh. Um, so Leanne, could you tell us a bit about your work and what you do? Yeah, so I have my own voiceover and speaking coach business, which means it's in two parts. So the voiceover stuff is where I, I describe my own voice as a uh, ear candy which means it's something that you like to listen to mm. so I use my voice as ear candy for those who like to listen to podcasts audiobooks uh, meditation apps um, radio promos and adverts e-learning and explainer video type of things so that's what I mainly do for the voiceover work for kind of external clients and things like that um, and then in regards to the speaking coach side of my business that's where I'll use my own speaking voice to help train women speak more effectively in business. Mm -hmm. And that could mean walking them through, coaching them through webinars, um, providing digital products like audiobooks, ebooks, audiobooks, templates and stuff on topics like um, how to develop a strong, strong voice in the workplace or just in general, mm -hmm. um, how to use storytelling techniques to be an effective speaker. Uh, how to say no effectively and not feel guilty and how to present yourself effectively in interviews with the strength of your voice because you know I found that as many women that I've worked with they look great on paper but when they go into the interview they just kind of do their own thumbs down so I work with women there are a few men who I work with but the majority of my client base is women in business or in corporate who want to be able to um, speak effectively in business or corporate fields Oh, that sounds really excellent work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's uh, I've been really keen actually to speak to people who do voice coaching and speech mm -hmm. and it's um, an area of culture I've become quite interested in. I think because of making the podcast, I'm more in tune now to people's voices and things. And yeah. I'm also very aware that I am a 35 year old woman with the voice of a small child. So <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. Um, so it's something I feel very conscious of, but I also um, I don't really want to change who I am or how mm -hmm. I speak. So um, I was quite yeah. keen to find your podcast because you deal with that sort of thing of how not to lose yourself. Yeah. So um, there's quite a lot of stuff that we could get into there from um from your from your introduction to yourself and yeah so I'm really keen if it's okay to um to think uh, to talk a bit about your podcast and the training that you do because mm -hmm. um I think certainly in the pandemic um I've been speaking to so many practitioners who are saying well I've got these skills and knowledge and I actually want to share that to help people and yeah. so it's really great to find people like you would you be happy to tell us a bit about your podcast and that sort of work yeah. that you do yeah definitely so the podcast I really love because um I just like to be able to share obviously my thoughts and feelings but during the podcast I've also doubled up with some other um experts as well to hear their focus and stuff so 
so it's like a double whammy podcast you can sometimes hear me by myself talking then you'll hear other conversational pieces so it's a bit of both mm -hmm. um so mainly the podcast is to to be like if you're ever at the gym and you're running and you're like I want to learn at the same time rather than hit my good Spotify music list um it's something that can help train you and you can things that you can actually practically do that day while I'm talking etc so mm -hmm. Like some of the ones uh, that I've kind of, there's one that I really, really am excited to, when that one goes live, that's going to be next week or so. It's um, with a lady who I've done a conversational podcast with, and she talks about, her name's Marissa Bailey Clements, and she talks about um, the imposter syndrome. Now that can happen in many areas of life, mm -hmm. but particularly when you have to speak on a Zoom call, do training, or you've got to make that phone call, or you're going to go for an interview. So she talks about often people can feel fearful of speaking or what they're about to say because they get an imposter syndrome in their mind. And she gives a really great technique um, on the podcast, and she's got more obviously on her own website and on Instagram, about you need to name and shame the imposter syndrome. Mm. So she calls her imposter syndrome or all those negative thoughts, Linda. So when Linda pipes up and says, oh, you can't do that, she's like, oh, Linda, what evidence you have? Show me why I can't do this. Tell me, show me all the evidence. And of mm. course, Linda is an imposter, isn't she? So she doesn't have any evidence. She's just it's all smoke. Um, so then that's how you can shout down uh, Linda or call your imposter whatever name you want, whether it's a girl name, boy name, whatever it is. So she calls it that. And then so she goes head to head with Linda in her own mind. And then that's how she's able to get over that kind of imposter feeling. And a lot of times people feel that they can't speak, but they actually can. But their first stage is their mind. That's where they need to speak loudest first. Mm. And she tits on a little bit of that because that's why some people... You know that they sound nice when you talk to them on the one-to-one -one or a small group setting, but when it gets that big numbers, 10, 20, 100, thousands, et cetera, they're like, oh no, the numbers, it's going to be, it's going to, too many people are going to hear me stumble and mumble and stuff. But that's when Linda's talking too loud, you know? Mm. Um, so really great speakers have been able to speak effectively in their own mind first before it comes out of their mouth. And that's where the training comes in. What is your own mind saying about what you can do? Because with the voice, you hear it, it, okay, so your listeners hear it once just from what comes out of your mouth, but you hear it twice because you hear it within your head, then you hear it out. Mm. And so you may think, I don't, some people are like, I don't like the sound of my voice. It's because you're hearing the inside one, mm. not just the one that's coming out. And other people only hear the other one that comes out, which goes through sound waves, through your ears, rings in, and then goes in secondary voice or second sound that your voice produces. So that's why some people are like, I don't like the sound of my voice on the phone or such and such, because you hear its primary sound first inside. And that's not always how it sounds when it comes out, mm. transmits into someone's ear. Um, so, yeah, I think in regards to skin, it goes back a stage when it goes into the mindset first, which is with a lot of stuff. You'll see like great athletes, like, you know, people like my, one of my favorites, Usain Bolt, like, yes, he can run, but if he didn't tell himself that he believed he's mm -hmm. the fastest and the greatest, not once, not twice, but three times over, he would never really have won all of those golds and medals mm -hmm. and stuff. Cause he actually told himself first, he's going to win. And then he just showed everyone else that him and his own mind had a conversation about, mm -hmm. you know, so that's what I really notice when you look at people who really achieve stuff, they tell their own mind something first, then they deliver. Mm -hmm. Gosh, yeah, that's um, a really amazing way of thinking about it. I we've talked, um, various guests have talked about imposter syndrome on the podcast, and mm -hmm. that's a totally different way of thinking about it. That's fascinating. Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. definitely. I'd never heard it like that before. Mm -hmm. And when she said it, I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gosh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to hearing that. Then, so that'll be mm -hmm. out next next week. Um, brilliant. Yeah cool um yeah so I mean that's the thing isn't it because so much about our voice it's not just about the voice it's not just about how it sounds but it's mm -hmm. that thinking process and the mindset yeah before it mm -hmm. even comes out so yeah there's so much more work to do you can have mm -hmm. all the training in the world to sound mm -hmm. a certain way but yeah. if your mind's not in the place where you need it to be yeah so, yeah, because you get into loads of, of different areas like that about mindset and confidence. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it is definitely 
everything, whether it's speaking, losing weight, learning to drive, uh, going to the shops, it all starts off in the mind. That's where the real work happens. Everything else was already what your mind convinced it can do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. And then, um, so, but, but I mean, then the practical application of things, mm -hmm. I mean, do you, when you coach people, is it, yeah. so there's, a, so there's those barriers mentally to get over, but then mm -hmm. do you have clients that want to actually change their voices? You know, what, what kind mm -hmm. of training is it that mm -hmm. you would do with people? Yeah. So there's, there's often a range. So I'll have people who want to do speaking coaching where they just want to have more confidence and strength in the voice that they have. Mm -hmm. And so they want to be able to naturally go through a business negotiation, do a training or a meeting. So those are kind of like your speech, um, speaking coaching people. Mm -hmm. And then there's another part of, pe there's another group of people on my client list who are very keen to do uh, accent reduction and accent softening work. Now those are two different things. Mm -hmm. So accent softening work would be someone like for yourself where you've got yeah, an accent yeah. and I will train you to soften the way how you pronounce certain words. So they may imitate more of someone with a London accent or mm -hmm. a Liverpool accent or a Spanish accent. So we will train the way how you move your mouth, your lips and the way you breathe mm -hmm. when you speak so we can soften something. So that's accent reduction, just so you can articulate more to, to, to sound like you're from a different region. So that's, that's kind of accent softening. So you can sound like you, but mm. just soften. If you may say something in a sharper way, just soften that a little bit, sharpen it here, etc. That's accent softening. But then accent reduction would be to remove your accent totally, often like what you see famous actors do. Mm -hmm. So a key one would be um, Idris Elba. So he's a born and bred Londoner from East London as well. So it's got a little twang the way he naturally speaks but you'll see him in other shows and movies where he's got an American accent so he's had vocal training where he's been trained to remove the English accent and replace that with American English articulation and an accent etc so those are the different types of clients that I can work with in regards to accent work um, so I'm not really a fan of accent reduction unless you're trying to do it for a movie mm. or you need it for a particular song, et cetera. Because some people can have an accent maybe from, I don't know, from Asia, but when they sing, they sound American mm. because they have learned how to imitate an American accent through singing. But when they speak, it's slightly different. Um, so I'm not a fan personally of accent reduction because I feel that your accent represents who you are, mm. where you were born, you know, your, your, what, what you've learned at school, your fun, you know, all of that stuff. I feel that your accent is as unique as like your, your fingerprint. So I'm not really a huge fan of accent reduction unless it's for a particular purpose. I don't really like to work with clients who say, I need to reduce my accent. I don't want to sound like I'm from Asia. I need to sound like I'm a born and bred Londoner so I can get this job. That's not really what I would advise because mm -hmm. you're not even really being yourself. Mm -hmm. and then you're mm -hmm. fighting against your own mind once again because your mind knows that I'm from this particular area, but my mouth says I'm from London, you know? So it's slightly, you don't want to live in conflict within your own mind. So I'm happy to work with people who want to do that for movies or for a song, etc. But um, I'm happy. I I I enjoy the accent softening clients because mm. I can understand they just want to sound more articulate, mm. you know. Because there could be some clients I work with uh, from Chennai, uh, some from even from France. Just the articulation of some of the words. So there's a, a lady from France who I worked with, uh, and she would say the word. So the word clothes, mm. she would say. Clothes, clothes. <laughs> so it's just things like that, just soften it. And um, this was, and this is not just her, this is other French clients that I've worked with. So the word money, she would say Monet, which is mm. like Monet, the painter. Mm -hmm. So I would always say, you painting? You painting that much money? You painting? Just to let her start to trigger that mm. she needs to make sure she say money, like cash money, rather than Monet, like the painter. Mm. So just things like that. Those are little techniques just to soften the accent. So she still sounded very French, mm. but she was softening the accent so that she can be more clearly understood to uh, a British English audience who, where she was going to go and transact business to. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Yeah, oh, I'm really glad you picked up an accent there because I did want to um, throw in that elephant in the room with mine, you know, because um, 
living in England and being a Northern Irish person, you know, I have done a lot of that softening that you're talking about. That my normal accent would sound more like this and I talk dead fast, you know what I mean? So yeah. I have really slowed down, I've mellowed it, I've softened it quite a lot. So um yeah. it's really cool that um to hear you talk about that, but also to say that yeah, it's so much a part of our identities. It's yeah. so much part of where we're from and everything and you carry it with you. And I know a lot of people who have erased it quite a bit yeah, yeah um which I think is a bit sad yeah me too but uh yeah so that's really encouraging and positive it's brilliant yeah definitely definitely yeah because I heard the difference when you just shifted yeah. so like when you go back home with your family and friends do you just oh, go back straight back, back. To, yeah because yeah. <laughs> it's so much easier to talk in that way you don't have to think so much you can just uh, reel it off and stuff it's just so much easier on your brain as well yeah. definitely yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool yeah um but yeah so much of it is about being an effective communicator mm -hmm. so we will I think um there's not there's nice studies in linguistics where you look mm -hmm. at that people just will naturally without any training really without having yeah. to be told will just do those sorts of things or slow down or pronounce mm -hmm. things more just because they know that the person they're speaking with is maybe a speaker of a different language or yeah. whatever the situation is that it calls for I think a lot of us naturally do that but there are people who who don't and maybe need yeah. a bit of help um so it's all really fascinating areas of just I think culture and looking at how, how we even communicate with each other yeah and, yeah so um brilliant I mean uh, it's so on the likes of your podcast you you tend to get guests who talk about a wide range of stuff so you've mentioned that mm -hmm. before but um yeah you you get some a lot of insight not just from the UK but from the likes of the USA as well and yeah. I was wondering if you pick up on differences in diction and mm -hmm. accent and presentation and mm -hmm. just all the manner of things you know how do we sort of perform our voice through our bodies and and that sort of stuff I mean is there anything in that sort of area that um you'd like to speak about or um yeah so in regards to presentations mm. thing yeah or yeah so recently I've been talking a lot about presentations kind of like online versus the offline what we used yeah. to do yeah. and things because often in like in this new normal a lot of things are online and so you're mm. only being viewed on this small screen and things like that or um and before you can have the benefit of someone's body language you can hear that there's humor in their voice because sometimes if the connection's not great or the wi-fi is you know chipping out it, it starts to st um you know stunt what it is that the person's saying and things mm. so definitely with presentations um online which it seems like it's going to be for a longer term than what we thought mm. we thought we'll be back in business by September but it's not so <laughs> we've got a bit more patience um definitely with presentations I think it depends on where you're going to present I don't like a finely re rehearsed or heavily practice okay. presentation mm. because it really locks in the person because you've got to be able to know the material mm. and bespoke it for the people who are listening so you could have the same material, go to teenagers, go to women in their 30s, go to Canary Wharf with investment bankers and go to a care home. You've got the same material, but you know how to bespoke it, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So to fine tune it, bring in different um, jokes, bring in an example that's relatable to the audience stuff. So I do agree with uh, practice makes not perfect, but progress. Mm -hmm. Practice makes you feel comfortable with what you're going to say so that when you're actually going to go and deliver it, you're like, okay, I know I'm going through these three points. I'm going to do an introduction, a middle and an end, and then send in a freebie. But I don't like it when it's too fine tuned because if uh, what I always advise against is obviously people who write down their notes word for word mm -hmm. should be just kind of like the bullet points. Cause if you know your stuff and you're an expert yeah. in this stuff, no one, you don't need to practice. That'd be like someone saying, Oh, I need to write the names of my children down just in case I forget them. You'll <laughs> always remember that it's in your heart. And if it's something that you're talking about, obviously at work and stuff, you might be doing the quarterly stats, the numbers and figures you probably need to have written down, but the qualitative information, the story behind all those numbers, just be familiar with it, but not have it memorized. Mm. Because if you go then, someone's distracted, someone's on the phone, your shoes are hurting you, all of that kind of memory game. And, and 
and and uh, and it just kind of all goes out the window and stuff so I think talk like you're talking to your friends mm -hmm. obviously engage it if you're in a professional court format one but be very friendly because people everybody wants a friend whether you're going to speak as the lecturer or the professor everybody wants that friendly voice you know to tell them even if it's the toughest information mm -hmm. it needs to be done in love you know mm -hmm. yeah so yeah don't don't memorize your stuff word for word be fully aware of it and the mm -hmm. points but don't don't memorize it because that locks you in and then if you have to deviate you're like oh my gosh this is where the fear comes in okay. you haven't got that flexibility you need mm -hmm. flexibility mm -hmm. when anything it's a moving moving wheel it's constantly on the move when you do talks or training or meetings and stuff mm -hmm. so it's that fine line between being quite personable or coming mm. across as perhaps a bit robotic and yeah because I think yeah. yeah I think probably if you if you've rehearsed it so much that it's by rote it doesn't mm. sound like you mean it necessarily yeah and 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 you can't fool people people can hear when you're being mm. a robot because if they try and intercept and you're like oh I've lost my train of thought Mm. yeah but you would you, you haven't lost a train of thought because you were reading off the notes and that you know kind of thing so it's not genuine like what you're saying it's not genuine for someone to just read off I mean if you're just reading off something just email me the notes and I won't show up quite simple <laughs> let's save each other all the time you know so stuff like that because I'm, I'm here to to hear you to hear what does your mind think to hear what does your heart think about this particular mm. topic I mean some topics not much heart in it you know but you know that's what I want to hear from you I don't want to hear that you're very good at memory games mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it's not a game show yeah okay okay that makes a lot of sense um so you, you mentioned earlier that you tend to have mainly women clients mm. so I was wondering if you'd like to to talk a bit about that so um I mean, uh, I feel like I'm in these conversations all the time because I listen to a lot of feminist podcasts and mm. stuff. So um, it's normal to me to to talk about uh, you empowering women and women mm. in workplaces and things. So, mm. um, but I, I don't know if all of my listeners would be into them to the extent that I am. So mm -hmm. I was wondering if you would like to talk about, well, what, why do you focus on women so much? And is mm -hmm. there particular problems with, well, not problems necessarily, but do women mm -hmm. encounter more issues with, mm -hmm. with voice and what thoughts and observations would you have on that? Yeah. So I've often found that women in the workplace uh, don't always feel confident to speak up, particularly about when it's stuff about uh, salary negotiation or mm. trying to negotiate a fee. Um, like a man will conflict go in there and say, yeah, I need 120k for that job. And the lady will be like, oh, no, can I ask for that? Because, you know, I've just got married. There's likely I'm going to she's got different mm -hmm. um, reservations in her mind. She's going to go, can I ask for that? I've just got married. Me and my husband are planning children. Then I know I'm going to be off for maternity. Then I know they're going to pay me for me. There's all these different, different woes and woes and woes and things that come in. But a man's that confident as if like I'm the best you've, you're going to get. And if you don't pay me that, you're not just you're not going to get this. Ladies don't some ladies who I've worked with they don't always come with that idea it's that hashtag you know like know your worth mm -hmm. so you need to know your worth so you can go and tell people this is how much it's going to cost you this is your investment in me if you want me there for a year or however long whereas men are quite confident in that because women can sometimes sometimes be in and out of the workplace because of often child care and then the other side of the spectrum when you've got aging parents who mm. can become ill as well it's often the woman that has to change her work schedule so that she can attend to aging parents it's not always you hear that a man's like oh I'm going to be off for the year I'm going to take the paternity leave or you hear that a man's mum is ill and he's going to work half day etc so he can be with it you know you don't or often it does happen but you don't often hear that the impact on a man's working lifestyle and I've just found that the women that I've worked with who've who've I have my client base on um it can often be women who may have come from a different industry because that's where lack of confidence can come where someone may have come from like could be coming from an education industry mm -hmm. moving into selling cakes online very fantastic cakes but because they feel that that gap in between it's, it seemed like it's not a relatable to industries how can they confidently ask for such and such money and then other people have been in the industry for 10 or 15 years and I'm like it's not how long you've been in the industry it's the quality of what you produce because someone could have been in the cake industry for 10 years they produce a wedding cake looks like that someone could have been doing it for a year and they produce a fantastic one with engineered electricals and lights and stuff mm -hmm. it's about the quality that that you produce so um I, I 
I really do feel that. I mean, that is quite obvious. There's a there's a pay difference between men and women in certain industries and stuff, but that's slowly changing, which is great. Um, but there's often been this deficit between men and women, men and women, um, and 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 I, and empower women so that they can feel strong in what they've got to say because women have a lot of value to add women can see different things in the workplace that men don't see mm -hmm. they've got this kind of all-rounder looking thing where some men are quite tunnel vision depending on what the industry and on the goal whereas women are like okay this is the goal what about these other mitigating factors that's why it's great to have a woman in your team and I really respect um I remember when Barack Obama put his cabinet ministry together there were a lot of women featured mm -hmm, in that mm -hmm. usually it's quite male dominated one or two women here and there but there was a heavy presence of women there so he knew he could understand the benefit of having this type of extra eyes on what the project you're trying to do so and that women may feel hesitant to um explain why they're going to add this much value mm -hmm. why they're going to be able to do this and um you know you know just not just was linked to money but just the value that they can bring mm -hmm. is second to none you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah brilliant stuff um I was thinking from a technical point of view as well um a few years ago I read up on scholarship in sound studies mm -hmm. that um identified that microphones are Mm -hmm. this is a massive surprise to everybody are calibrated to men's voices yeah <laughs> yeah because they, um, yeah. they have the green that you know cis women wouldn't have and that sort of thing mm -hmm. and um and I was wondering if if you've ever encountered because now we're in this world as you've pointed mm. out where so much of our communication is being done like this via screens yeah. and via microphones and things um I was wondering if if that's now become an extra area that you're having to compensate for in and work with women clients and that sort of thing is it, it you know how do we what microphones are are good to amplify us and and make our voices sound good and how do we want to sound and do we want to try and have a radio voice and do we want yeah. to <laughs> do you know um, yeah mm -hmm. yeah with with microphones they they can do different stuff yeah. and different voices sound different on a microphone so say for example the main one that i record on is that uh, um a road microphone and it's like a front face one some people have top facing ones or all rounder ones etc so the way how i sound on that road may be different with, from another woman who sounds mm -hmm. on it so with microphones, I've always highly suggested that it's best to test them out because different voices pick up differently on different microphones. Um, I think if you just get one that makes you sound like who you are, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. um, which could be any, it could be the Scythe and Heiser, it could be the new many. There's so many that you can choose from. It's like, it's like Christmas it is. <laughs> and I think it's best to test them out if you can, if because I've I've been to like uh, music shops where they've got them all out oh, and right. you can actually test them and hear how you sound on them. Mm. Um, and I think that's the best way to pick a microphone. Um, that's what I found for me personally. And that was advice that I was given from my uh, voiceover coach. You just really mm -hmm. test them out and see how I sound. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool, cool. Okay. Um, so um, I think I had uh, on one of your podcast episodes that I was listening to, you talked a bit about, I think it was with a guest, um, you talked a bit about connections between the voice, but also somebody's um, visual presentation. So how they look and, and maybe body language and that sort of thing as well. Um, yeah. And I, I was wondering if you had anything, any comments on that too, mm -hmm. you know, like can our voice um can it facilitate uh, or be facilitated by how we present ourselves you know how, yeah. how we look in our bodies or our faces or whatever yeah definitely like um like body language and how and how you dress for whatever environment you're just speaking is very very it needs to be in support of what's coming out of your mouth you know so if you're gonna go and speak to five-year-olds and go and do story time on a friday you'd, it'd probably be more advisable to wear something colorful something that they'll be attracted to or something that they'll think oh i know that jumper or things like that for five years something that's colorful engaging and bright and that will go along with like this person looks friendly i like this person they wear my favorite color i'm going to listen to them so that kind of what you're wearing kind of helps form this friendship or this speaking friendship quicker mm -hmm. than only relying on what you say 
So, and I really do think with what you're wearing should should be uh, should be something that not saying you're dressing for the audience, you're actually dressing for yourself, mm. so, so yourself can feel comfortable. But something that will support what you're saying, and the audience will see as okay, she's an expert in. Say, for example, as a ma- makeup girl, she's an expert in makeup girl because she's got the right clothes on, she's got the makeup on, she's got the Instagram look, that type of thing. Um, but it must also be comfortable for you because it's the worst thing when you need to go to a team meeting, mm-hmm. go and do a presentation or go and do a Zoom and you just don't like your top, your shoes are hurting you and your trousers are too tight. It's, it, just, it just offsets you and it doesn't let you use your whole mind's capacity on delivering, delivering, mm-hmm. delivering from what you need to say. Um, so body language is really key. And um, yes, in this new normal, but even more so when you do the face to face things, because people can tell when you're not interested, Mm -hmm. they can see in your, um, in your, in your expression, like, there was one guest I spoke to, and uh, we talked about network, networking, um, how it was done previously, when you go to an event, now a lot of it's online. And just even this simple thing to be aware of in body language, when you're speaking to someone, you're face to face. But what what lets you know if you have that person's full attention is not just their eyes, not just their their body looking at it's their feet Mm. because people's feet will point to where they want to go. So Mm -hmm. if they're fully engaged, their feet will be looking at you. If they've got bored of what you're saying, the feet will slowly turn because they want to move. Their face and shoulders won't be looking at you, but the feet have kind of said, Mm. I'm out of there, you know? So those are type of little tendencies that you'll see in body language and things. And other things that you'll see kind of in this new normal in regards to body languages, some people are not hands people. They're not got the jazz hands. So that doesn't mean that they're not interested in what you're saying. But kind of things to really build rapport and friendship is to smile, to nod, and to kind of give thumbs up and all these type of things. Not like you're like a five-year-old school teacher and stuff, but, you know, just to, because um, it's much more difficult to engage your listeners full attention through a zoom Mm -hmm. or just through a podcast because that body language that sound that kind of movement and things that's all part of the communication what the struggle is now is that we've got say like for example it's 100 communication you've got the eye contact you've got the body language then you've got the sound you're only working with 30 percent now and you've got to build everything through this tiny 30 percent window Mm -hmm. To build trust, I'm an expert, listen to me, engage, all of these different things with just this small bit of sound or this small square. Yeah, yeah. Challenges. <laughs> um, so uh, I was uh, wondering as well if it's okay to ask you a bit about your voiceover work because that's mm-hmm. quite cool. I've never, I don't think I've yeah. ever met a voiceover artist before. Mm-hmm. So I was wondering if you would talk us through a bit of what that entails. Yeah. So everyone gets into this voiceover industry through so many different avenues. It's not like, you know, being a doctor, you must go to college, go to university, then you do your residency, then you go off into the hospital. It's not so structured. You can get into so many different avenues. So my one is, I remember years and years just growing up, people say, Leanne, you've got a nice voice, you should do something with it. I didn't quite know what that meant and stuff. So 2016, when I set up the business, I was, I'm going to do voiceover. That was just what I was going to focus on. But then I realized that speaking coaching was actually a growing industry that people kept asking mm-hmm. me for help. But in regards to the voiceover stuff, the stuff that I do, um, I'll often get contacted online, on Instagram, wherever, wherever they've heard my voice. And they'll say, okay, I've heard your voice. Um, can you read this script for me? So you may give like an audition piece. So say for example, um, let's just go. So one I did for Adidas. Um, so they they sent me the scripts. I get to read them through, check that I'm okay with it, with the wording and the tone. And if, if I actually sound right with the voice, mm-hmm. with the script, because sometimes they'll pick one or two or three people, mm-hmm. but they'll hear your audition, your demo tape, which is kind of like your audio CV. Mm-hmm. So it's got a range of all the different styles of work that you can do. Um, so then they'll hear that and they're like, okay, I like the sound and tone and pace of this voice. We'll ask her to read our particular script and see if she can really pop it, you know? Mm-hmm. So you may be competing against yourself and other few who's going to go into the second round so with Adidas I read the script they said it sounds great they gave me some direction of where they wanted different push and lifts and stuff Mm -hmm. and then everything's done remotely so this kind of new normal has been my normal for ages so I've never Mm -hmm. met any of these clients like face to face and stuff so I was emailed through an agency to have the Adidas script um did the recording I sent it over to them their engineers their side will edit it put it towards lay it on the video and then I'll just see the end product and stuff so 
yeah it can be quick it can be long some of them even though you think it's like a it's like a three minute read that can actually take more than an hour because yeah. you've got to, yeah you've got to read it change this change this take out this all of this the editing behind it and stuff that can take time and then it's the pickups meaning the the reruns that they want can you edit this bit can you say this word again change it so it, it's not just it's not, not just like oh it's only a two minute advert it takes so much longer to put that all together because of the length of time you've got to do and even though like you see it as a three minute advert mm. I probably could have taken 20 minutes because when I say each line I put a space mm-hmm. in between and that helps with editing and stuff like that things like that so that was what I did for Adidas. And then you just see the end product if you do. Some of the stuff are private things with non-disclosures on. So it mm-hmm. doesn't go out into the public realm, mm-hmm. even though it's your voice. It's mm-hmm. for internal use only. Uh, one I did for uh, the Landscape Institute. That one was a really great one. That was to mm-hmm. encourage more women into the landscape um, um, business. So that was an advert. You see them all kind of going off to college and stuff and university. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I did the voice over on that and so I was just emailed by an ex that was that time was the explainer video the production the video production company um they asked about if you can do this piece of work and I was like yeah it seems like a great project and then I see the copy version on YouTube and that so there's so many different ways how you can use it um right now I'm working on a kind of like a meditation app but not okay. really like not the kind of slow kind of put you to sleep one mm-hmm. but the more like I'm your kind of coach meditation kind mm. of kind of self-care kind of thing working on that um and then it works in so many different ways I've done radio adverts where they'll send me the um send me the flyer so I've got to make up something from the flyer so mm. they're like so stuff like that um usually I'll get a script to read Uh, then we'll go for it and I say this must be the final version any more changes will be chargeable and stuff like that yeah it's all been done just remotely but with the voiceover stuff it's really something you need to if you think you want to do it try it Um, don't think you're going to be like this huge celebrity and stuff like that but (laughs) get lots of training because your voice that you sound like may not be one that's selling at the moment may not be one that people are buying mm. so you need to know where does your voice fit are you good for animation can you do adverts have mm. you got the base voice can you do audio books because well, there's so many different parts mm-hmm. of voices so I mainly do like radio adverts explainer videos meditation app podcast but there's other people my friends they only do animation mm-hmm. uh, some of them only do adverts and promos Others only do uh, audio books and, and uh, radio plays. So there's mm-hmm. so many different niches that you can do. It depends on the sound of your voice and definitely getting training and coaching because I have a trainer and voiceover coach um, and he gives lots of advice about the sound, how to refine it and stuff mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. just point him into the right area of where I should be trying to book work. Mm-hmm. Where my because you can book work anywhere but more more niche area the more niche you go it's probably easier for you to focus your skills okay. I would say mm-hmm. okay and um I was going to ask you if your setup if your arrangement for this work had changed at all but are, are you set up with a, a home studio sort of thing anyway or yeah uh-huh. yeah so I set up a home studio I, I got it made myself because I'm quite tall so the Mm -hmm. ones that were out and about they didn't look pretty they didn't really have my favorite color and couldn't really do that you know move how I want to move when I talk so I had one built for me so yeah home studio is a must Mm -hmm. if you want to go pro as a voiceover writer Mm because there's always studios you can book in if you just need to do a certain recording Mm -hmm. so there's all studios in central London so I've had work from other clients where they don't want to release the script uh, for an email they want it to be going through one secure Mm -hmm. location to protect it and you'll go off to a studio that they've booked and you go there the script is in front of you 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 read it and then you leave and you don't get anything else so definitely I've had I've done work in a studio depending on the client's needs but all of it majority of it 95% of it is at home on my home home studio definitely Mm -hmm. but you don't need this I was talking to my cousin about that you don't need like a huge home studio you need to have a uh, recording area Mm -hmm. and that could mean in there's so many ways you can do it Um, that could mean in your wardrobe sitting inside Mm -hmm. your wardrobe because all those clothes and stuff they really reduce the sound or you can sit on your bed throw the quilt over your head and record that way because the quilts are really good at mm-hmm. you know condensing the sound and you could be you can't record in the bathroom because there's no way you can stop the <laughs> bounce noise but in a in a cupboard in a closet in your wardrobe 
with a thick court on your head those are very good or if you've got thick curtains on the window mm. you can you like, like you know in those posh hotels and they've got those huge thick <laughs> curtains those are really good to do it really really good <laughs> you know so you can start anywhere and you can even order you know acoustic acoustic tiles from amazon mm. put them up in a corner or you can get like the there's like a shield one you can get so if you don't have a home which is permanent could be renting or you just don't have a space or when your child goes to sleep you use their play area you can get a microphone and a recording shield etc put that up and go for it mm. you know so it doesn't have to be this fixed thing so that when family come over for sunday dinner they're like oh i'm sitting by the microphone eating <laughs> no is you can you can have it movable you can definitely have it movable yeah. so Brilliant. yeah Mm-hmm. yeah cool cool that's good it seems like um an industry in which you can survive in this brave new world <laughs> for a while definitely. <laughs> definitely great stuff um yeah so um mm. uh, i'm just thinking is there is there anything else you'd like uh, to get into i don't want to take too much of your time um you've been so generous with everything you've said so far it's brilliant mm-hmm. um but yeah, I, I suppose it's just, uh, do you have any punchy tips for how can I have my voice heard more effectively for a range of situations, you know, yeah. that sort of stuff? Yeah, I think for sure. How, how, to have your, how to have your voice heard in a number of situations is to get someone to listen to you first. Because mm-hmm. some people think they sound great or some people think they don't sound great. But when they get an actual... Uh, ear that can listen to them and say okay when you say these words you could just slow down Mm -hmm. you can be a bit more punchy and what I find as well I know I'm always talking about talk 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 speak 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 but some of the ways you can actually get your voice heard is actually stop speaking and just listen Mm -hmm. to what's happening in the environment so you'll hear what your audience wants or what the current conversations are then you'll be able to formulate in your mind okay I need to ask this question Mm -hmm. or come with this response so if you've heard that people are saying oh there's no cold food or water drugs in the office etc you can come and say you know what I've been able to negotiate a contract for the cold war I've heard that the people are complaining so I've been able to negotiate this contract I'd like to put it on the procurement list can we go for this come so you've already kind of heard the need it's kind of like mm. doing the research before so you can speak effectively before you get into that environment and stuff mm-hmm. so be very punchy yeah the thing about practice you know I don't say I don't think people should memorize stuff no it's not a maths test it's not doing your times tables practice things you can be comfortable with them so it feels natural uh get someone to listen to you so they can hear how you sound because you may be too critical on yourself rather than what your listeners actually are Mm -hmm. so that's really helpful um I also think as well that if you're not sure how you look record yourself set up a Facebook live page and invite one or two friends who may not be your besties but some type of people you could have Mm -hmm. met in a speaking group on Facebook let them watch you ask Mm -hmm. them for their thoughts what do they think you can improve that's a really good one Mm -hmm. Uh, record into your phone send yourself your own whatsapp voice notes and just Mm -hmm. hear how do you sound and things like that I think that's really key and read out loud daily because a lot Mm. of times as an adult I don't know why we don't read out loud daily when we're a small child and we're learning to read we're reading at home in bed we read out loud it's exciting but it's like when you get older it's like you must turn into this adult professional and only read in silent you know silent Mm. mode and and that really stops you from getting comfortable with your voice Mm -hmm. so those who who don't like listen to their own voice I say read out loud for 10 minutes Mm. read a book a blog, you know, your WhatsApp messages, just read them out loud, get comfortable with your own voice, you know, so I think that would really be key, because some people think they don't sound good, but they do, Mm. it's just that they're not used to hearing their voice out loud. That's fantastic advice, Anne, thank you for that, Um, I would second that reading out loud, definitely, Mm -hmm. Um, I find quite early on in lockdown, Mm-hmm. I was actually struggling to read anything at all. And I find that if I just sat and read it out loud, I actually concentrated on it yeah. better. Yeah. And then it, 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 it doubled up as a bit of practice for, you know, doing this as well. So yeah, yeah. I would definitely back you up on that one. 
definitely mm -hmm. it really it really helps reading out loud and um, particularly if it's a good book that's written very well with the punctuation mm -hmm. because if you're someone that when you read out loud you have to obey those pronunciation pronunciation marks because mm -hmm. that helps you to learn how and when to breathe because some people are not speaking effectively because they have they don't really breathe correctly some people yeah. just breathe in through the nose they don't use the mouth so the diaphragm's not engaged so when I have clients like that I'll often advise them which is what I do myself I say start going own swimming because swimming is one where you can learn how to breathe effectively if you can breathe effectively and train your lung and your diaphragm in a pool of water you can do it even more effectively out in the dry mm -hmm. air so that's one thing that I don't know if any coaches are advising that but that's what works for me mm -hmm. train start training how to not just swimming like that but you know proper <laughs> head in <laughs> like that like you're a pro in the olympics that type of swimming where you're training yourself to breathe because that really strengthens your lungs and your diaphragm mm -hmm. and that's why i think a lot of people struggle where they say i can't speak for 10 minutes because your lungs and your stomach and your vocal cords are weak because they're not mm -hmm. trained effectively so if you start training yourself how to breathe properly by doing swimming or even like when you jog start singing out loud because that works you know you're doing mm -hmm. an activity and you're singing so you're opening up this lungs capacity do those things or just going for a walk singing out loud with your headphones on whatever that trains it so you're going to strengthen it because some people don't think they can't speak well but it's actually the under underlying tools that they don't have strength in mm -hmm. there's a lot behind it with the voice there's a lot there's a lot behind it okay gosh that's really fascinating stuff yeah yeah definitely yeah brilliant definitely. um is there is there any other area of your work that we haven't covered that you would like to point out yeah about? yeah definitely so um every month I usually try to have a different theme okay. of um of what I want to teach so over these last few months kind of July and August time I've been uh had up one of my new courses which is called how to use storytelling to become an effective speaker Mm -hmm. And that kind of taps into kind of, you know, great speakers like, you know, Oprah Winfrey, Matthew McCoynahay, Joanna Lumley, she is very smooth. Mm -hmm. Dame Judy Dench, mm -hmm. all these type of ladies, Michelle Obama. Um, so these people are very good at the way they speak. And it's not just because, because their voices are all totally different. So it can't be because, oh, because she's got a nice voice, that's why she's a good speaker. Mm -hmm. No, pull it back. These people use storytelling techniques, like they know how much time to use. They know when to use dramatic pauses. They know when to speed up, have jokes, have tears, etc. These are all techniques that are used when you're growing up, when you're reading stories as a child or at school, they all have these different different type, type of um, techniques in the story mm -hmm. built into them to build suspense, to build engagement. And those are the techniques that we've learned as a small child, what we still need to use as an adult when we speak, because that's how you engage a person's mm -hmm. attention. If you can engage a seven-year-old, eight-year-old reading a book, even more so, you've got to build those techniques, smooth them out a bit, use those for adults when you're speaking. And so in the course, I go through different techniques and, and relate them back to these kind of one, some of my favorites who I like to speak and just to learn how to engage engage someone when you speak it could be on a one-to-one -one on a date five people are training me in it could be a conference just learning those techniques so that's on my website leans www.leansvoice.com and on the speaking tip shop page and then you'll see like all the different digital products i have and i'm always having um different things that I've got a newsletter that comes out each week where I'm sending out information about how different tips on how to speak more effectively um I think the most recent one was about are you looking after your money maker mm. and your money maker is your voice mm -hmm. and like some people like I've got a sister she's a primary school teacher and she'll every year for sure she'll get laryngitis she'll yeah. lose her voice and stuff and that's an indicator that's like the end extreme of not really looking after your voice and that can happen to anybody particularly if we're getting into this season of on top of coronavirus flu season and the mm. cold season and stuff so it's I give lots of different tips and techniques of how to look after your voice because if you don't have a voice to even talk on to the phone and stuff you're often very limited I know we're in a text messaging just lifestyle now but if you can't speak you really do feel limited you know mm -hmm. so I go through um that's on my news that I give each week so I'd love people to join if they want to oh, hear brilliant. from me mm -hmm. uh and my podcast is out every single Tuesday um and then I always release um uh, I always release like a new course, something in regards to speaking. It's always under the umbrella of speaking, but this month's current theme is using storytelling to, to be an effective speaker. Mm. So I really love people people to check that out definitely I do loads more stuff as well ebooks <laughs> audiobooks but I don't want to kind of bring out a shopping list but those are the key <laughs> things that are happening right now 
yeah oh that's awesome thanks yeah I, uh, I'm quite curious about audiobooks too but yeah it's only if you want to <laughs> get into yeah. that right now <laughs> uh, yeah. I, won't, I won't make you <laughs> yeah I love audiobooks uh-huh. um I find them I find them you need a lot of endurance as a voiceover to record yeah. them because it's quite a lot of hours mm-hmm. you've got to sit or stand depending on how strong you are to record them at the because uh, every different part of the book moves isn't it? it's like it's like a it's like a written movie audio books I find mm-hmm. so you've got to be able to be very excellent at moving through the script or the text etc using that but as a consumer I love listening to audio books it's one of my favorite things I love reading but I love that the audio books I feel like I feel like the author's walking with me yeah. you know I love it I love that it's like someone's walking with me holding my hand telling me mm-hmm. look at the colors look at this etc I love that but because I know how much work, because imagine a nine hour audio book, mm-hmm. it is double, triple, <laughs> four times a month to get that recording down, laid, edited, ready to go. That's what, but because that's why I even probably enjoy them, listen to them even more, mm-hmm. because I know how much labor went in to get mm-hmm. that book to where it is to get it on Audible or wherever it is you buy it on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Brilliant, brilliant. Great stuff. Um, okay, so um, you've mentioned where to find all of your your newsletter and, and your new courses and everything. Um, do you want to uh, tell everybody where to find you on your socials and repeat your website again, just so that we can all find you and follow you and find all your links and everything? Yeah, definitely. So I'm on Facebook and Instagram. I'm uh, Leanne's voice, so you'll be able to find me. And I'm Leanne, right? L-E-I-G-H-A-N-N-E. So it's not that common. So if you put in any of the other versions, you might not find me. So probably just chuck it into Google and Mm -hmm. put in Leanne's voice. You'll probably see Leanne Pinnock from... Oh, I've forgotten that girl group, but her name comes up because she spells her Leanne the same as me. Okay. <laughs> um, but put in Leanne's voice and you'll find me on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, I'm on Twitter. On Twitch, I'm called Lee the Voice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm on LinkedIn as well. If you want to be professional, I'm on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. And uh, those are the key ones that I'm on. And I also love a bit of TikTok. TikTok has just been my new thing. I love doing the videos. Yeah, I just love it. So I just go on TikTok. And of course, I'm also on YouTube as well, which get the longer version of the free classes because I teach live classes um, every Thursday, three o'clock about Mm -hmm. speaking skills um and you can see it live on instagram um and then you can also watch it on youtube as well the replay um and then yeah i love those and my website is www.leannsvoice.com oh that's wonderful thank you so much yeah thank you. can't wait to check out all your new things as well it sounds brilliant yeah brilliant excellent. Okay, well, Leanne, I can't thank you enough for being so generous and um, giving some so many great tips and insights into everything you do with speak, speech coaching and everything. So, um, yeah, thank you. Can't wait to see what you do next. Yay, it's been yeah. excellent. Thank you so much, Paula, for having me on today. It's been mm-hmm. great speaking to you, and I hope the listeners really got loads of gems from it. And please feel free to stay in contact. Yeah. And um, any listeners that want to get hold of me, Paula's got my details, yeah. and you can get hold of me. I'm not one of those people that are like, no, you've got to go through my PA, Charlotte, and Felicity. <laughs> I'm not like that at all. If you message me, it's me getting back to you. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you so much. That's brilliant. Yeah, I'm sure people will get a lot out of this. I certainly have. Yeah, it's been brilliant. Thanks definitely thank you so much this has been audiovisual cultures with me paula blair and my very special guest leanne turner this episode was recorded with zoom and the music is common ground by airtone used under a creative commons 3.0 non-commercial license Episodes release every other Wednesday wherever podcasts are available with early access to our Patreon members. Do see the show notes or support page at www.audiovisualcultures.wordpress.com for ways to help the show. And please do like, share and subscribe and tell all your friends all about us. Be part of the conversation at AV Cultures on Facebook and Twitter and AV Cultures Pod on Instagram. Thank you so much for listening. Be excellent to each other and catch you next time.